Hello, I'm Cray with the CL Sites. Today I'm going to explain how the CL Sites work and how the components are simple but effective. First, the CL Sites are made of an aluminum body that has been anodized. Next, the optic, it's an acrylic, not glass, and it's been molded. The guts here are a polycarbonate material and then your fiber optic is actually an edge glow material. So as I mentioned, the optic is made in of acrylic and this is a, a molded plastic. It's very durable, very scratch resistant and then uh, they get it optically clear so it looks like glass. It's uh, unique as far as how we molded it. We wanted it to be mechanically captured so as you can see, there's little ears at the bottom of this thing. So you slide them in, they're friction tight as they go in. And then you will have a screw on each side. And that is what captures that optic to make sure it won't come out of there. So they're mechanically captured plus they're friction fit. So you don't have to worry about them wiggling around or moving. And then if somehow you did put a big scratch or uh, I don't even know how you break one, but if you manage to break one, you can replace one. Moving on to the reticle, as you look through, you can see it in there. The reticle is on this edge glow material. The edge glow material does just that. It takes the light, transmits it to this edge, and gives you the most light possible right there on that edge. Um, if you happen to have the tritium model, there will be tritium right here under that white capsule and that will be directly behind your reticle. So during daytime use, you won't even see the tritium glowing, but as soon as it gets dusk, you're in a, a really dark shadow or obviously when it's dark, that tritium vial will illuminate that edge glow material and where you're actually magnifying that with the optic it's, uh, it works fantastic how well that it lightens up that edge glow. So moving on to, this is that polycarbonate piece. Polycarbonate's uh, very durable. Um, it can withstand enormous amounts of heat. We've actually boiled these. Uh, you can look at those uh, videos and uh, we can boil the whole site and it won't hurt anything. So if you're worried about the heat on like an AK or something, it's no problem. But uh, these are just molded. It's got all the slots for uh, how the adjusting works, which I'll show you. The edge glow material is UV glued on there, uh, so it they're pretty much one piece after we do that. So they work really well. Right up here in the front, there is two spots that are molded to fit an O-ring, and that is actually how we mount them into that site. We put an O-ring in each site, and then a screw goes through, so the O-ring allows it to move but it always has pressure back and then it's rubber mounted. And that leads me on to the adjustment screws. So first off you see they've got the black on them. That is a rubber. So this site has uh, everywhere it's got rubber on it to make it so that uh, it takes any kind of harmonics or anything out of your sight to where if you have a high, high powered gun it's not going to rattle it to where it'll lose a zero. Now these screws Hopefully you can see this. They have two threads on them. So one's a 440, one's a 256. And uh, this is actually a patented system that we came up with. And you only move the site the difference in pitch. And that's how we got our fine adjustment out of these, but yet still having a mechanical adjusting point. So the block itself is threaded right here in the wall. And then there's a nut right there inside so you will be screwing into the nut and into the wall at the same time and then it will move the plastic uh, polycarbonate guts over the distance of the pitch so that it'll just move a lot slower than any fine threaded screw. A fine threaded screw move, still moves them way too fast and it works the same um, with the elevation adjustment here. You have your 440 nut in there and then the base is also threaded and then that, that gives you your fine adjustment. This little 050 Allen wrench will come with the sight. Goes in here. And just remember that it doesn't take much adjustment. A quarter, uh, 
quarter of a turn will move it quite a ways. So when you're adjusting these, they've been bore sided, so they should be really close out of the box. So make sure you go in pretty small increments. You don't want to go uh, long ways because you can thread that screw all the way through the block. And I have a video how to fix that, but it's just better if you don't mess with it to the point that it does that. So this is what those nuts look like. This is the 440 that slid into the site. And this is the 256 that's also slid into the site. Stainless steel nuts, so no problem there. Um, so moving on, the tritium, we're expecting about a 15 year life expectancy out of that. I actually think we'll get a little bit more. Um, tritium's half life, life is around 12, 12 and a half years, but where we're actually magnifying the tritium, if there is any glow whatsoever from that tritium vial, it's going to illuminate the edge glow material. So I'm thinking 20 years but you should for sure get 15. For those of you that don't know what tritium is, tritium is a radioactive material that glows. Um, and it's, if you're worried about, I guess, the radioactive part of it, the, it's such a low amount of radioactivity that it won't even penetrate the vial that it's captured into. And then even if it did get out of the vial, it won't penetrate your skin. You would actually have to eat the vials and a lot of them for it to hurt you. So there's no no worry about the radioactivity of it, but it works really well for us because this site has no electronics, no batteries. There's really nothing to go wrong. That tritium is gonna glow no matter what. It doesn't have to have any ambient light to hit it, to recharge it. It's just always gonna glow. So tritium is really cool in that way in the way that we're utilizing it um, which is also a patented subject of the site, is where it's directly behind the reticle. We are the only ones who are able to do that. Um, so it, it works really well for us being magnified. Um, as far as the sites go, they all work similar. The Obviously we offer this in non-tritium, a tritium form, the Gen 1 and the Gen 2s, but all of them function pretty much the same, just, uh, you know, this body's been a little bit, uh, you know, milled down to fit a pistol. This same one will uh, be put onto a base. They're actually a one piece, but they're a base that'll fit to a Picatinny or Weaver rail. But this video will work across all of our sites as far as how they function. Even our Gen 1, it's got the, you know, the um, same type of adjusting system with the double threaded screw and everything. So all of those components are the same throughout all the sites. Um, the Gen 1 isn't offered with Tritium, so that's the biggest difference between the Gen 1 Gen 2s is the Tritium and then just the body itself. Um, these have been sleeked down, a little bit uh, slicker looking and, and a little lighter on the pistol version. The other thing a CL offers is the fact that you can shoot this with both eyes open. Um, a lot of guys say that they're worried that it's covering too much of their target. Well, if you buy one of these, you shoot it with both eyes open, you're gonna find out that it's a lot better than your standard iron sight you have on your gun right now. And that is because with both eyes open, your left eye, or if you're left eye dominant and you're shooting the other way around, your right eye, it, it makes up for what you're losing directly behind the target. It kind of brings it all one together and uh, it gives you a really wide field of view. I've had a lot of customers say putting it on uh, guns where they're shooting, say deer in heavy brush and a lot of times they're running and they have a hard time getting a scope on them because they got to find them in the scope. This sight is a lot easier because once you find it, it's really easy to bring it in because you never lose sight of the target as you're swinging through. You always have both eyes open, you can just bring the sight right into it. The sight is in focus with your target so nothing is blurry. You're going to see the reticle just as clear right there against your target. You're actually going to look more at your target and just bring the sight up into it. And both of them are going to appear crystal clear. So the only limitations is just your eyesight. You can shoot this out three, 400 yards. I know a lot of guys who shoot animals out that far using these because it's a big enough target. They can figure center of mass pretty easy. So only limitation is just what you can see with your eyes. Um, the, I think the last thing I'll hit is just the, once again, no batteries, no electronics, they're lifetime warrantied, 
And then the fact that they do have a scope accuracy, I guess you could say, as far as you can use a pinpoint to aim off of. As uh, some of the competitors, like a red dot out there where you're actually covering your target with the red dot, this you don't have to do that. You will have a fine point at the point of that triangle or where the two lines intersect on a crosshair to aim off of. So even if you're 100 yards out, you still have that fine point. And that is really what makes uh, the difference when you're trying to shoot really tight groups. And then this sight has no inaccuracies in it. Now we get a little bit of grief because they said it bounces around a lot on a pistol. Well, that's a good thing. That means it is showing every single movement that you are making. This is all but a parallax free sight. There's no such thing as a completely parallax free sight, but if you test this one out, you will find out that there is next to none. Um, the only place you'll ever have that reticle leave the target is if you're down at the very farthest side of the optic itself, and then it's still moving parallel even at that point. So that means you're only going to be at the most an inch off if you're shooting 100 yards, and that's if you have the reticle at the farthest side of the optic. So as long as you're anywhere pretty much in that optic using it optimally, you're going to be shooting dead on with the point of that triangle, whether it's down in the optic at the very top or off to the sides of it. So the the moving around on a pistol is a good thing. That means that it is showing exactly your mechanics and it is showing how well you are holding that pistol and it's showing that the sight is accurate. If you're right on and you have a steady trigger pull and you don't flinch or and you hold that thing dead on, you're gonna hit right there where that point was. So take that as a good thing. On a rifle where you're shouldering it, they feel dead solid because the gun's dead solid. There's no movement really. So when you put this on a rifle, it's going to look like it almost doesn't work. It'll be that solid. So we've strived to make this very simple. It's got a lot of technology in it, but as the user, we want it to feel really simple to you, work simple, and uh, just be like bulletproof. We've uh, dropped these, really beat them up bad, and they're still always ready to go. You might scratch some anodizing or something if you drop it on the concrete, but it doesn't break the optic. We've done drop tests. We've ran them over with pickups. They're a full aluminum body. So, I mean, a channel of aluminum is pretty hard to, pretty hard to hurt that. So, even if you do, they're lifetime warrantied. So, thank you for watching this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to the company. Uh, we'll be happy to fill you in on any other information that you're looking to get. And I hope that I was able to answer some of your questions and maybe push you over the edge on giving these a try. Thanks.